Excuse me. All right, so this is, um, I'm recording. This is my symbol, right? Um, today we're going to learn a third method. So if you're doing what we learned yesterday to solve the problem, you're not actually doing the homework because the homework is on the method. So far, we've learned about the graphic method. You don't necessarily need to write this. The graphic method is where we graph two linear equations called a system, and we look for the point of intersection. This is time consuming, and it's not very accurate. Because if we end up in a fractional area, it's hard to eyeball with the human eye. Last night we did substitution. A equals B and B equals C. We can substitute A with B and get A equals C. Um, elimination has two different names. I don't really like the way that they show the example, but um, in the book they're going to call it the addition method. They also, it's the same thing as elimination method. Addition and elimination are the same thing. All right, so this is basically if A equals B, what happens is, is I add up and down. I'm going to add up and down. If A is equal to B and C is equal to D, then I can add positive A and positive C a plus C is equal to B plus D. I just add going up and down. Okay. Now let's start with the first one. I'm going to take both equations, line them up on top of each other. And notice the elimination or the addition method. I draw a line. And notice, when I add 2x and 5x, adding up and down, 2x and 3x makes how many x's? Yes, 5x's. And then when I add positive y and negative y, what does that do? So it's 5x plus 0 equals 10. And we solve. What we're doing is we're eliminating a variable y to solve for x. Um, you can also call it the addition method because we're adding up and down. That's why they're called elimination or addition. Divide both sides by 5 and we get x equals 2. If I know x equals 2, what do I now do to find the y? Peyton. You don't have to do that. <clears throat> You're doing too much work for yourself. It, it helps if it's already like that, but you don't have to do that. Luke, substitute just substitute it in to either, Peyton, substitute in to either original equation. I mean, you can do that. Get y alone in one of the equations and then substitute it in, but it's just as much work. So now I'm substituting x in for either equation. Does it matter which one? No. I can pick an equation. And x equals 2, subtract 4, and y is equal to 2. So what is my solution to this system of equations? Uh, Rogelio? 2, comma 2. 2, comma 2 is the solution to the system. Okay. Circus. On a test, then, do we, would we have to write the solution is then the thing, or do we just write the... You could just put 2, comma 2. Oh. <clears throat> but when you're saying it, if you're taking a common core test, you're going to want to say that, Sarkis, because the computer, they're open-ended questions, and the computer is going to pick up all your academic language. 
So the more wording you input, the more points you're going to get towards that problem. They don't just want an answer. They want to know you really understand the concept. So by saying the solution to the system of equations is 2 comma 2, or is the ordered pair, that tells me a lot. That tells me you can relate to the, the answer to what we originally talked about. Some kids, they get an answer, and they don't know what that represents. Do you understand what I'm saying? So by adding those words on a, on a test, an open-ended test on the computer, a computer will pick up those words. Um, questions? <clears throat> All right, let's try the next one. Oh, every time, again, the beauty of... of systems is that what answer you get it should we can do it mentally and check our work two times remember the solution is two so two times two is four plus two is six does that equal six yeah. yes three times two is six minus two does that equal four yeah. so it works all right why don't you try this one on your own pause the recording and do the work Okay, so where are we at now? Let's check our work. Um, I want to hear from somebody I haven't heard from. How about Piper? Uh, I'm not getting this. Okay, let's talk it through. Okay, can we do that together? Yeah. I'm going to line it up. Because once you talk it through, that's where you internalize it. So, um, is there anything... Okay, every time we do this, we're looking for opposites. Are there any opposites between the two problems, Piper? Um, yes, the negative x and the x. Okay, so we're adding everything up and down. So what happens with that negative x and the positive x? Negative 1, positive 1, how much does that make? Zero. Negative 5, positive 5, what does that make? Zero. Negative x, positive x, what does that make? Zero. Okay, so when I... Add them going up and down, it's 0 plus, what is 3y and 1y? 4y. Uh, 4y. Four four y. And then I'm also adding my constants. 5, positive 5, and positive 3. Um, eight. So I have 4y equals 8. Now what would I do, Piper? Uh, Good. So now what would I do with that? If I know y is equal to 2. Uh, fill it into one of the x problems. Okay, and which one would you put in? Um, I'm going to go with the negative x plus y equals negative Okay, three. I don't know if that's what they use, but let's see. Okay, well, we'll do both. We'll do both. She wants to do negative x plus y equals 3. So I'm going to do negative x plus 2 equals 3. Subtract 2, and we get negative x equals 1. So what does that equal? Negative one. X equals negative 1. X equals negative 1. <clears throat> I have to multiply everything by negative 1, and I end up with x equals negative 1. So my solution is negative 1 for my x, and what did we say the y was? 2. two. Negative 1 comma 2. But if I chose to put it in the other one, <coughs> um, we said our y is 2, x plus 3 times 2, x plus 6 equals 5, do I get the same x? So again, my solution is negative 1 comma 2. Does it matter which original equation I substituted into? Okay. Now, what can we notice <clears throat> about the form of each equation when I do use the elimination method? Sarkis? 
X and Y are on the same side. X and Y are on the same side. What do we call that form of an equation? Uh, Sydney? Form. It's in standard form. So before you can do this, you can't have one in slope-intercept and the other in standard form. They have to both be in the same form in order to eliminate. Preferably standard form. Yes. You could, but if you're eliminating a y, then that might be a problem because you end up with zero and there's more math you got to do. So it's best to get them into standard form. Okay, so in this case, what would I do? I'm given one of my problems in what form? Uh, Kiana. Can I ask you a question for the one before? Okay. When you, the one we got before that one, we canceled out the y's. Why do we do it here? You can cancel any variable. Our goal every time is to cancel our variables, one of the variables, so we can solve for the other. So it doesn't matter if we, we negate our x terms or our x variables or if we get rid of the y's. We just have to get rid of one so we can solve for the other. So it wouldn't matter? Nope. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, in this situation, so in the first one, it was easiest to, to get rid of the y's because those are opposites. In this situation, the x's are opposites. Okay? Now, you might have to be manipulating some equations. Okay, in this situation, what's wrong with what they're giving us? Um, Luke? They're in two different forms. So we have to manipulate which one? Slope intercept form. So what am I going to do to that, Nicole? Um, you're going to um, subtract 3x. Subtract 3x from both sides, and I'm left with y minus 3x equals 4. And then I rewrite the other one. Now, do we have any opposites here? Gabriella? The y's are opposite, so that's what's going to eliminate. And then what am I left with, Jason? Um, you're left with um, um, negative 3x and 2x. And that makes? Negative 1x one equals? And equals, um, I think, 9. Yep. We add up and down our constants. And then I've got to multiply everything by negative 1 to clear the negative or divide everything. And we get x equals? Right. So if x is negative 9, I now go to either original equation. Peyton, in this case... Y is already alone, so that's going to be easier. But I don't have to manipulate an equation because I can still solve for that missing variable. <coughs> 3 times negative 9 plus 4 is negative 23. And my ordered pair, my solution to the system is, Nora? Negative 9 comma negative 23. Good. Negative 9, negative 23. And we can always, we should be plugging that, substituting that back in to check our work. Okay? Mentally. All right. Now, sometimes, are you guys good with that? Sometimes we are not, um, what's wrong with this one? You tell me. For the situation that we're about to encounter, yes? There's nothing that cancels anything out or no opposites. There are no opposites. So we have to manipulate it and make it opposite. What's the easiest to make opposite? The x term or the y term? William? The x term. Yes. What would I need to multiply that x by? 
to make it the opposite of 2x. No, that would become negative x and 2x. I need it the exact opposite so I can zero it out. Um, Peyton? And I can do anything to equation an equation as long as I do it to all terms. So what I'm going to do is multiply that entire equation. This, see, this doesn't work. I end up with 3x. So they're erasing that. I'm multiplying that entire equation by negative 2. So this becomes negative 2x plus 8y equals negative 18. Okay? Now, William, opposite of 3x. Negative 3. X. X. Opposite of x. Somebody, opposite of x. Cedric. Good. Opposite of a happy face. Yes. Sad face. Yeah. Or a negative sad face. A negative happy face. You don't want to do a negative sad face. So it's double negative. <coughs> huh? Shh. All right. Here we go. Um, so now we're eliminating our x terms. What am I left with? Jordan. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to figure it out. Uh, zero. Zero plus? Um, oh, oh, sorry, 11y. Equals? I owe $4. Negative, I owe 22. Good. Next up, um, Matthew? Y equals negative 2. Now what do I do with that? Um, David? We substitute it in. There's no plug on it. I want to go with x minus 4y equals 9. Okay. So substituting it in for x minus 4y. x minus... 4 times the quantity of negative 2 equals, equals 9. Okay. x... So x plus 8 equals 9. Subtract 8 from both sides. So... One more time in a complete sentence. Answer is, how about Maddie? Solution. <clears throat> We've got it there. Remember, a solution to a system is an ordered pair. What is the ordered pair? 1 comma negative 2. See what I mean by, by you saying the solution to the system? It's reiterating what you're doing every time. So if you can say it, you can do it later, and you'll know what it means later. <coughs> and then we can check it. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 times negative 2 so we have 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. 2 and negative 6, does that make negative 4? Yes. And we know it works here because we just showed it here. Um, solution. Uh, 1 minus 4 times negative 2. Minus, that becomes plus 8. Does that equal 9? So it works. All right. Um, let's skip to a little bit more manipulating. Let's make it even more difficult. Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay. So in that one, I chose to multiply everything by negative 2 so my x's would be opposite. In this case, what's going to be the easiest, you know what? You can choose, just because my PowerPoint chooses one thing doesn't mean you have to choose it. Mahalia. Choose times 5 to the 5. To the lower, yeah, to the lower. To the lower equation, he's going to multiply everything by 5. 
But what else could I choose? Um, yes, I'm in. Multiply by negative 1 to the first equation. To the second equation. You can multiply by either one, by negative 1. So there's like three or four different methods we could use here, or, or, or directions we can go in. All right, let's try another one that's more complicated. Don't be afraid if you get a fraction, too. Remember, just put that, that, turn that 2 into a fraction, 2 over 1, and then multiply it out. Okay. In this equation, is there anything? Well, no, that I can make that. No, I'm going to have to. In this equation, is there anything I can multiply by one thing to make them opposites? Yes. Negative 1 does not make any of the variables become opposites. We actually, in this problem, we have to manipulate both equations. So let's say I want to get rid of the x's. What's the closest number I could do that would make them opposites? Um, Gabby? 10. 10. So what do I have to multiply the top equation by? By a positive 5. And that becomes, what's the new equation? Perfect. And what do I have to multiply the bottom equation by to get that x to be the opposite of negative 10x? Um, McKenna? Positive 2. Positive 2. So now I multiply 2 times 5x is... Keep going. And then it's 4y equals 8. Equals 8. And now what I've done is I've manipulated both equations so I can make my x's opposite. Alexis, negative 10x and positive 10x is what? Zero. Good. Positive 15y and negative 4y is what? 11y. 11y plus 11y equals... 17. Nope, they're both positive. 25 and 8? 23. 23. 33, sorry. Uh, divide both sides by 11. And I am left with y equals 3. Okay, questions? Okay, then I substitute in and we solve for the y. I mean for the x, sorry. And I get add 6, 5x equals 10, x is equal to 2. Okay, so what's my solution, please, Maddie? Solution is 2, 3. 2, 3 to the system. Okay. David? And are these like the easiest that it gets? This is really the most difficult it gets for elimination method. Or addition method. Addition. They might have some word problems, so I'll go through those right now. Um, yes. So, let's continue. All right, now check your work. Practicing on your own. Okay, multiplying the top or the bottom. What do you want to do? Top. Bottom. Okay, 2x plus 5y equals 10. And 2x minus y equals 7. You want to make the x's opposite? Yeah. yeah. Then you don't multiply by negative 2. You just multiply by negative 1. Because <coughs> you need to make it be opposite by shh, negative 1. Then you get negative 2x plus 
y equals, I'm distributing, minus 7, and I have my other one, which was 2x plus 5y equals 10. Shh. Now, I'm eliminating here. I'm left with 6y equals 3 divide by 6, and y is equal to 1 half. I think the problem was the number you, you saw the 2, and you were trying to use a negative 2. So then my ordered pair then is going to be, um, I substitute in a, okay, so I'll do 2x minus 1 half equals 7. Add 1 half. Add 1 half. So 2x equals 7 and a half, which is also 14, 15 halves. Okay? 2x equals 7 and 1 half. I'm going to turn that into a mixed number. 2x equals 15 over 2. I'm going to turn this into a fraction. So I'm going to multiply the entire side by 1 over 2, by 1 over 2. So I could do this. I could do this, but you guys are used to clearing now. Since this has a fraction in it, I'm going to clear the fraction by multiplying everything by 2. I get 4x equals 15. Do you understand that? <clears throat> Divide by 4, and x equals 15 over 4, and we said y equals, so it's 15 over 4, and the other one is 1 over 2. Yes? What is it on the bottom next to 2x? 15 over 2? 15 over 2. I couldn't, that's why I rewrote it up here. Shh. All right, I'm, this is the end of the lesson.